February, Britain's BG Group announced an $8.7 billion write-down on its QC LNG project on Curtis Island in Queensland. And there are mounting fears that others will have to do the same. Neil Woolridge reports. At Curtis Island, off the central coast of Queensland, workers are putting the finishing touches on a $75 billion liquefied natural gas construction boom. The three Curtis Island projects, led by Australia's Origin Energy and Santos and the UK's BG Group, will help make Australia the world's largest LNG exporter by 2018. But the LNG industry, which was seen as Australia's next great economic driver, has lost some of its sparkle. There's no doubt that um, the current oil price environment, which reflects the price of LNG, makes it difficult for people to make bold decisions about putting new capital on the ground. But the fundamentals of the LNG market still remain strong over the long-term cycle. Santos's GLNG project is one of the three Australian ventures that will start producing LNG this year. Others in the Northern Territory and Western Australia are expected to deliver their first product in 2016, mostly to energy-hungry customers in growing Asian markets. That pretty well signals the end of the major LNG investment phase for Australia. And if this lower oil price persists, then we would expect that it'll be very difficult to see new greenfield projects get established over the next three or four years uh, because of uh, the high costs that Australia still has. But the revenue bonanza that was once hoped for is fading. Good news for motorists in the tumbling oil price has turned into bad news for gas exporters. Compared to, say, the view 12 months ago, uh, when oil prices were above $100 a barrel, we're forecasting that uh, LNG revenues in 2015 will be down to roughly $10 billion US dollars. And if you look at the tax take on that, you are looking around a $3 billion uh, reduction in uh, revenues coming through this year. And the lower oil price also puts at risk the book values of Australia's major LNG projects. In February, BG Group took an $8.7 billion write-down on its QC LNG project. Investors are now fretting that Origin Energy and Santos will have to do the same. They've got a different investment profile up front. They've got different structure around some of their assets, including their pipelines. So it's not talking the same thing with GLNG. We've gone through that process. We've gone through that process with our external auditors and we're comfortable that we have no need to take any write-down. But those calculations assume a long-term oil price around 90 US dollars a barrel. Deutsche Bank's John Hergy says another year of low oil prices would force the companies to rethink that assumption. If we're still in the sort of 50 to 60 dollar bread uh, range, then those carrying values will be tested and the market will be asking uh, or, or perhaps imputing that those, uh, the risk of those impairments uh, start to increase. The next major LNG project earmarked for development is Woodside's Browse Venture off Western Australia's Kimberley Coast. The $40 billion project is slated for approval in the second half of this year, but the changing market conditions are casting a shadow over Browse as well. And certainly the economics look very challenging in this low oil price environment. Um, so Woodside as operator have gone back and tried to look to sort of see if they can um, lower some costs but uh, it's going to make it very challenging for the project to achieve sanction in this current oil price environment. There hasn't been any real large uh, long-term LNG agreement side globally in the last three or four years and so for projects like Browse uh, which does need to be underpinned by long-term offtake agreements uh, it's unlikely that they can proceed unless they get the LNG buyers over the line. And the LNG boom also has a sting in the tail for domestic gas users. Before Australia had a viable gas export market, local consumers enjoyed decades of cheap and abundant supplies. But now that the export market is being developed, domestic gas prices are being forced into line with global prices, and that's already showing up in higher bills. At the wholesale level, we're certainly seeing, we're expecting a 100% increase in gas prices coming through. But if you look at the proportion of the gas price that people that appears on people's gas bill when they when they receive their bill, it's only roughly 25%.
and calls for a domestic gas reservation policy have so far fallen on deaf ears. What people often miss is that the resources that have been used to feed the export market would have stayed in the ground at the previous domestic gas prices. There wasn't enough money in there for those investments to be made. So what the export market did was actually provide the stimulus to develop those resources. Santos's Peter Cleary says that makes it all the more imperative for politicians and the community to support the next frontier, coal seam gas, something that until now has met stiff resistance. And we've got to continue to make that case because without investment in gas resources, then you know, we will find um, the market running short of gas. And that's not what anyone wants. We want to be able to supply not only the international markets, but the strong Australian domestic market.